Shoma. Its literal translations as immodest, shameful, or shy barely convey its meaning. The term describes behaviors considered to be harmful, inconsiderate, or disrespectful to the community. These range from being stingy with guests to disrespecting elders. Morocco is what some theorists call a kin-based society. This means that behavioral norms are based on relationships within the community. Shoma is invoked to remind people of their accountability to their kin at the risk of hurting their own reputation. For women, Shoma can be used as a tool for subordination, acting as a method of corporeal control. To have l'hishma is to defer to those in a more powerful position, adopting a shy and obedient demeanor. Revealing clothes, the use of profanity, smoking publicly, and any demonstration of sexuality are all seen as improper for a woman. The policing of women's bodies and sexualities is based on the premise that their desires are a disruption to social order. Women's bodies and activities are subjected to l'hadiyah, close surveillance and scrutiny, by their families, neighbors, and the general public. Today, the public space also extends to the web, where women's bodies and behaviors are monitored and policed. In the past, l'hishma was only reinforced orally. Today, it takes on unprecedented proportions through mass media. Whether it's what we wear, how we behave, or the company we keep, parents, neighbors, media outlets, or random men will interject. Historically, the seclusion of a woman in private space was a mark of her wealth and prestige. Only aristocratic families could afford to constrain women indoors and relieve them from working in public space, as opposed to peasant or working women who had to expose their bodies to male-dominated public space in order to work. Similarly, today, bourgeois Moroccan women are aided by cars and chauffeurs which they use to move from safe haven to safe haven. I myself grew up with such a privileged lifestyle. I didn't have to navigate public spaces by myself until I was almost 18. The streets are considered improper, and most of all, unsafe for a woman. Women in Moroccan hip-hop contest these notions by celebrating and participating in street culture, imposing themselves on the male-dominated public space and rejecting ideas about prestige. Though women in Moroccan rap differ in their style, politics, and messages, they all contest corporeal policing and its accompanying hadiya, or surveillance, and hishma, or modesty and shyness. With their rhymes and public behaviors, these rappers disrupt hishma and hadiya. <laughs> Hip-hop was created in the 70s by marginalized African-American and Caribbean male youth in the Bronx, New York to resist the status quo and denounce socio-economic oppression. Hip-hop culture was introduced to North Africa through the internet and satellite television in the 1980s. It was quickly adopted by disenfranchised urban male youth in Morocco. Hip-hop culture traditionally subverted the artistic standards set by the bourgeois class. Unlike exclusive and pricey museums or theaters, it celebrates street culture, knowledge, and language. The vast majority of rap is in Darija, the often belittled Moroccan dialect of Arabic, which incorporates grammatical structures and vocabulary from Tamazight, French, and Spanish. Therefore, even the language they use to rap subverts bourgeois status. <laughs> Mostly urban Moroccan youth have looked to hip-hop as a medium to express their experiences in ways that are often critical of the Moroccan state. Founded in 2005, YouTube became an important site for global music exchange, unbound by the limitations of state-regulated radio or the slow distribution of cassettes and CDs. This is where I conducted my fieldwork, examining hundreds of music videos, interviews, and live performances. On this new digital medium, Moroccan rappers found freedom to express unbridled social and political critiques. They spoke out about the main issues facing youth, such as unemployment, discrimination, and resulting drug addiction. An increasing number of women have joined the Moroccan hip-hop scene, beginning with a handful of mostly underground women in the early 2000s and growing to 18 recording female rappers in 2021. These women speak out about the same political and socioeconomic issues as male artists, but they have added another dimension to their social critiques by denouncing the practice of hadiya. While it's typical for all hip-hop artists to defy Moroccan social norms and traditions, women's contributions to hip-hop actually represent a continuation of a long tradition of lyricism and poetic descent. 
During the struggle against colonialism, female poets in many rural areas, just like their male counterparts the Imdiezin, relayed information that strengthened resistance and rallied men during armed insurrections. Shekhat, professional Shebi singers and dancers, also use poetry to criticize society openly. Countering ideas of Hishma, their accompanying dances exude sexuality, all in front of a mixed gender audience. Women in Moroccan hip hop carry on these oral traditions of contestation into hip hop, continuing to push the ever changing boundaries of Hishma. Similarly to some of the other female rappers I examined, Deja released five songs between 2014 and 2017 before dropping off without a trace. Inspired by old school rap, the El Jadida rapper discusses some of the popular topics of the era. She talks about the emotional and physical aspects of Hadiyah, socio-economic oppression, and resulting addiction. In this clip, Dija begins by lamenting her woes. Whether or not she commits social infractions, she is still subjected to al-hadiyya. She attributes this attention to the fact that she behaves freely rather than with restraint and hishma. She expresses exhaustion at the constant watchful eyes dissecting her every move. Most importantly, Dija contends with the way al-hadiyya has impacted her mental health. Due to the hostile environment caused by al-hadiyya, compared to being surrounded by wolves, Dija developed an unhealthy relationship with her body and self-isolated as a result. Ili, or Ilham al-Arbawi, is a 21-year-old rapper from Casablanca and the daughter of the iconic Shaabi singer and violinist Abdul Aziz Stati. Since 2018, she has published 16 songs, all qualifying as trap, a newer subgenre characterized by less political lyrics, more electric sounds, and auto-tune. She mostly raps about relationships, money, and her beef with other rappers. Her first song, Khalouni, Leave Me Alone, was created in response to the way she was publicly shamed for the videos leaked from her private Snapchat story. The contents of these videos completely crossed the threshold of Hishuma. The public reacted brutally, throwing their trash at her during the performance at Al Boulevard Festival. Her father publicly disassociated from her, even stating in interviews that she is not his daughter. Ili's poor relationship with her father is a result of the attachment of a woman's sexual purity to her family's honor. Ili and the interviewer both state that it's normal for a father to want to distance himself from his daughter's shuma, or in this context, overtly sexual behavior. The interviewer prompts Ili to condemn herself and to promise her audience she would no longer post bad or shuma videos. Ili agrees to do so because it would help her be taken more seriously as a hip-hop artist. This demonstrates a desire for autonomy curbed by a fear of disrupting kinship ties. While female rappers work hard to challenge notions of hishma, they cannot cross certain boundaries without facing significant consequences from family and society. While the women in Moroccan hip-hop fall under different subgenres and vary in their political standpoints, they all contest al-hadiyya and hishma through their lyrics, videos, and behaviors in the public virtual space. In embodying the roughness and boastfulness of hip-hop, they refuse to behave with hishma. They show off their lyrical ability and superiority to other rappers and demonstrate their toughness both visually and lyrically. Male youth have utilized the streets to contest the neoliberal policies that decrease funding of public services amidst high rates of unemployment. Young women facing these same issues are excluded from these public spaces of contestation. By claiming their place within street culture, female Moroccan rappers simultaneously fight the authoritarian state and patriarchal norms. Female rappers subvert the confinement of a woman's value to her modesty and ability to stay off the street. Instead, they seek validation in the hip-hop community by demonstrating their street smarts, mastery of slang, lyricism, and rhythm. I 
عشان صدا ما خصوش بدموع قهوة ومصوص غريق وجوع ما غايعتش قني تشاقوة من غير نوت كوك وشويد المداد صرت الدوام في دماغي شاد ليكو كيعمي بحال العجاج واش برا هادشي اللي نحتاج راه بغاوني كوين هرس الستاج خرجة 